Greetings, audiophiles and Mass Effect fans. Welcome to my reading of of my fanfiction, After the Fall. This is a Mass Effect fanfiction, and as such, most of the characters and the universe belong to Bioware slash EA Games. No copyright infringement is intended. However, the scenario and occurrences within this fanfiction are my intellectual property, so if you decide you want to share this with someone, credit me. Please. Part 7. Genetics. My DNA? Shepard put her hands on her hips. Cadell nodded. The elusive man discovered something before he... before the Reapers indoctrinated him. When he was still on the galaxy's side. He knew about indoctrination. He was studying it and its effects. Right. Snarled Garrus, who was leaning in the corner, arms folded. Later, he used that research to find the fastest way to turn people into husks. Bacarian? Cadell sat up slightly. Blue face paint and scars must be you. I admired your work as Archangel. Can we stay on topic? Shepard's tone was testy. She was starting to hurt a lot, and she was eager to get this awkward interrogation over with. Cadell blinked a few times, as though he'd forgotten his train of thought. Right. The elusive man's early research. He was studying the brain activity that goes on when someone is indoctrinated. He was looking for a way to counteract it, to block it or repair the damage to the brain. Instead, he stumbled across your medical file. How the hell did he get his hands on that? Shepard growled. Cadell just gave her a look which expressed how easy a task he thought the obtaining classified files from the Alliance was. Shepard gave him a warning glare. He pressed on. What he found in the file was a breakthrough. Your brain, Shepard. What about it? Chakwas leaned forward, a rapt expression on her face. You have a defect in your brain, Shepard. It's genetic, considered benign, but the elusive man saw it for what it was. Shepard, your brain will not allow you to become indoctrinated. You're immune. Shepard stepped back, no longer feeling the pain in her legs. She squinted at the man on the bed. He watched her with pale blue eyes. What? she breathed. The same thing that likely made you able to understand the Prothean Beacon. You were genetically designed to fight Reapers. Personally, I don't think it's a coincidence. Cycle after cycle, the Reapers come and they harvest, but they leave the lesser races. They didn't touch humans last time they were here. But humanity was touched by them, and humanity began to evolve. Very slightly, very slowly. You, Shepard, are the result of that evolution. Are you saying that that's why the elusive man brought me back from the dead? Shepard wasn't sure she knew how to feel, how to react. Half of her wanted to believe him. The other half was screaming at her to hold a pistol to his head and demand he tell the truth. He was trying to save his own skin. He'd say anything to get out of this situation scot-free. For all she knew, he was indoctrinated himself. Cadell must have noticed her distrust, but he forged on. Chakwas had turned and rushed to her computer, rapidly pressing buttons as the prisoner continued. Cadell licked his cracked lips. It's not only that. We found you too late. You were killed. We almost despaired when the Asari found your remains. He spent more money to revive you than any Project Cerberus has ever funded. Most of the people thought he was insane. Miranda Lawson, for one. She wasn't told about your brain. She was sent to monitor you. She also didn't know that she also had a similar anomaly in her own brain. She may not have known about you, but her father did. He wanted to create his daughters to be immune as well, though only partially succeeded. Miranda was resistant, not immune. Why Shepard, then? asked Harris, stepping forward, glancing at Chakwas, who seemed to be glaring at her computer screen. Why not find someone else, or create someone else? We couldn't. We tried. We attempted to replicate the genetic anomaly, but only partially succeeded. However, we did discover that the defect existed in other humans, to a lesser degree, and also in other races. Garrus tilted his head, eyes narrowed. Such as? 
The team the elusive man put together to combat the Collectors. You, Vicarian, you share a similar defect in your own brain. You're not immune like Shepard, but you're resistant. The Drell Thane, the Asari Matriarch, the Quarian Tali, the Salarian... What was his name? Morden, Shepard mumbled, though she was no longer focusing on Cadell. She limped across the room to stand over Chakwa's shoulder. She recognized her medical file. Chakwas had pulled up a cranial scan. She pointed to a small portion of the coiled mass that was a human brain. There, she said her voice husky, the defect. In your hypothalamus, where the brain decides when to secrete adrenaline. Alliance Medical noticed it, but could find no evidence that it impaired you, so you were declared fit for duty. Adrenaline. Shepard rubbed the back of her neck. I remember something about that from the Cerberus facilities we've raided. The ones that were creating husks. Something about the nanomachines which converted people into husks riding adrenaline and its alien equivalents through the body for fast conversion. We have come to believe that that portion of the brain had more to do with indoctrination, said Cadell, who had propped himself up on his elbows. At least judging by the discoveries we made with Shepard. We had your brain in our hands, Commander. We found out a lot of what we were dealing with. Do we have a brain scan of Garrus? Shepard asked, her voice more urgent than she meant it to be. In spite of herself, she was getting excited. Could this actually be true? We took one when he was shot on Omega. Chakwas tapped a few more buttons and another image appeared. The Turian brain was smaller, more elongated. Chakwa's eyes flicked across the screen for a few moments, and Shepard realized she was holding her breath. There! The doctor pointed. She circled the portion with her cursor. Smaller than yours, Shepard, but definitely present. Right in the portion of the brain that secretes the Turian equivalent of adrenaline. A slight irregularity. I'll be damned. Garrus was leaning over Shepard's back, and he almost pushed her forward into Chakwa's in his eagerness to see. Shit! He breathed. Shepard looked at the image of Garrus's brain, almost as though she was staring through it. Just before Caden spoke and distracted all of them from the screen, she noticed something else. Chakwas! Caden called urgently. All three of them turned around. Oh god, he's seizing! Chakwas exclaimed, leaping to her feet and crossing to Cadell in three strides. It only took the doctor seconds to grab a syringe from a nearby drawer and inject the convulsing scientist. Shepard saw blood trickle down the man's wrist as his hands yanked against the cuffs he still wore. Though she was still suspicious of his motives, she did feel sympathy for him then. Cadell settled as Chakwa's medicine took hold. He lay still, eyes closed. Did I do that to him? Caden asked nervously. Did I cause brain damage after all? We'll have to see, sighed Chakwa's wearily. We won't be getting anything more out of him tonight. I suggest we all get some rest. I'll keep looking over Cadell's work. I think I'll send a request to Earth for some help, though. Chakwas rubbed the back of her neck, glancing towards her computer. I'm a doctor, not a geneticist. If Morden... She stopped herself. Shepard knew that Chakwas understood how much Shepard missed her dear friend Morden Solis. We'll figure it out. Out you go. Shepard wasn't sure if she could rest. She was too wired. Her fingers twitched as though eager to pull a trigger. Her soldier's mind was on overdrive. Was it a trap? A trick to fool her into going too near the Reapers and becoming indoctrinated herself? Could it actually be true? She felt the barest twinge of insult. If it was true, the elusive man had not revived her for her skill or for her knowledge, but for her genes. For a moment she wondered bitterly if he had intended to use her as breeding stock when the war was over. Create more evolved humans? Well, the joke was on him, she thought, as she allowed Garrus to take her arm. She barely noticed as the Turian guided her to the lift, and they rode to her quarters. Her mind was a million miles away. It drifted around her childhood on Earth, a foggy haze of survival and strength, living by her wits and skill. Her time in the Alliance, where her craving for structure was finally sated. All this with possible new context. Was she the apex? The Reapers loved the idea of evolution. Could they have guessed that creatures would eventually evolve to combat them? If the scientist's story was true. Gara sat her down on her bed and carefully removed her leg braces. He set them beside the bed and she scooted back to lay against her pillows. 
For a moment he seemed unsure, but she stopped any notion he might have of leaving by grabbing his hands and pulling him onto the bed, into her arms where she kissed him hard and passionately. After a moment she gently pushed him back, her hands hooked lovingly over the bony ridge around his neck. Garrus, why didn't you tell me you were blind in one eye? I saw your medical file when Chakwas showed us the scan of your brain. Garrus sat back, an alarmed look on his face, as though she had found some deep and terrible secret. He moved away and sat on the end of her bed, his back to her. She scooted up behind him, wrapping her arms around him. His hands found hers and squeezed, but she could tell he was still tense. I lost the vision in my right eye when I took that hit on Omega, the Turian said slowly. Morden was the one who helped me modify my visor to compensate. That's why you never take it off, she said. Funny how she had barely thought about this before. Right. With it, I can see as well as I used to. If I take it off, I lose my depth perception. What good is a sniper without that? His voice was tight. She knew there was more to it. Garrus, love, you don't think I wouldn't want you if... I didn't know what to think. Garrus stood, stepping out of her arms. I just... I wanted to be a part of your team, a part of your life. I needed to be out there in the field with you, to have your back, to protect you. He must have known she wouldn't like that. Protect me? She said, trying not to sound too upset. I understand, Garrus, but I can protect myself. You could have told me about your blindness. Don't you know me well enough to understand that I would never think you were incapable? I know you have a very low tolerance for weakness. I suppose I knew I'd tell you sometime, but... The right time never seemed to come up. He turned to watch her, his small eyes very concerned. I'm sorry, Shepard. She crossed her legs carefully. You pushed me away sometimes, Garrus. You pushed me away when I wouldn't let you kill Sidonis. Now I find out that you kept your blindness from me? Garrus hesitated. He seemed to sway, one moment towards her, the next towards the door. For an absolutely terrifying second, she thought he was going to leave. Instead, he returned to the bed, sat down, and wrapped his arms around her. He buried his face in her neck, breathing in her smell. I won't push you away anymore, Shepard. I promise. We're bondmates now. That means forever. We can't survive forever unless we stay united. She kissed whatever parts of him she could reach. His fringe, his neck, his mandibles, and then his lips. They kissed for several long moments. Finally, she pulled back, breathing quickly, eagerly. You know, my legs are feeling a lot better. I think I could handle a light bout of wrestling. He smiled wolfishly, mandibles spread. I've got the reach. We'll go easy on the flexibility tonight. And they fell together onto the bed.